Hello, welcome to the third session of Painting for Beginners. Today we'll be looking at the basics of using acrylic paints. So starting with colour, um, there are three primary colours, uh, yellow, blue and red. And in theory, if you mix any two of those together, you get a secondary colour. So uh, blue and red should make purple, um, yellow and red should make orange. Um, yellow and blue should make green. Um, in practice though, pigments aren't as pure as that, so it helps if you have a broader range of paints. Often you'll get a green in a set and a purple in a set, um, because those are the ones which tend to not mix quite so well. But there is another way of, uh, of doing colour mixing, which I think if you are buying from scratch, you might as well try this, and that is to have two yellows, two reds, and two blues. So in the yellows, we have a cadmium yellow, which is slightly oranger, and then something like a lemon or primary yellow, which is slightly more towards the green. Uh, this one's good for mixing greens, this one's good for mixing oranges. In the reds, we have a cadmium red, which is very good for oranges, and then a magenta, or a scarlet or a crimson, which is good for mixing purples. Similarly, two blues, a cobalt blue or an ultramarine is very good for purples. Um, a cyan, a turquoise or a phthalo blue, very good for mixing greens. Now, don't worry if you didn't catch all those names because they're gonna come up on the screen now. There are lots of different makes of acrylic paints and if you're not sure you're going to really like them I suggest getting a fairly cheap set from WH Smith or from um, the range or from Hobbycraft. However, um, if you want a set that is good, really good value for money, look for System 3. Okay, so I have my palette of paint. I have my two blues my two reds and my two yellows and I've arranged them so that they're as close as possible in the colour wheel to each other so those two are going to make good greens they're going to make great oranges they're going to make great purples let's start by just demonstrating that oh notice that I've only got a, a blob small blob of each colour and um, very quickly your colours are going to get mixed on the palette and they're going to become messy um, and you don't want to waste the load. So if you put a small amount on at the time, then you'll find it's much more economical. So first of all, I'm going to start with, um, let me see, some of the cyan. So a nice blob of that. Uh, slightly damped my brush. I'm now going to wash my brush thoroughly in water. I've got two pots of water, one clean and trying to keep clean and dry that to a little bit with a paper towel and then get some of that yellow there and then on my palette I'm going to try taking a bit of each mix them to see what sort of color I get and that one and go in between and uh, hopefully you can see it's a really lovely strong uh, green mix a bit more it's worth spending time with your paints, just trying out, mix them in different ways. Let's see, one that's a lot bluer. Just seeing the range, a bit more blue in that one, a little bit, see the range of colors that you can um, come out. So I'm gonna carry on just trying out those different combinations of colors. There, so lovely, bright, strong colours. However, if I take this blue, for example, and this yellow, so I take the ones, the, the yellow that's closer to an orange and the blue that's closer to a purple, 
and I mix those together. You'll see as I get a much more of a khaki type colour. Similarly, if I mix the cyan with the cadmium red. So this one, with this one, I get a much darker color. Almost a sort of reddy brown rather than the purple. So try out your different colours and see how they mix together and the range of colours that you can create. So on to looking at techniques for using um, acrylic paints. And the first thing to say is that the techniques that we did uh, with watercolours can be done with acrylic paints if you add if you dilute them. The effects aren't quite as good, but you can use all of those techniques. I'm going to demonstrate uh, one, which is glazing, just so you get the idea. But first, I'll just point out, look at how dirty my water is. You need to keep changing your water, otherwise you'll get polluted, dirty colours. So, I'm working on a piece of card. Um, you could use thick white paper. And I'm adding some water mix it on my palette to the paint and I'm just going to apply a nice block of colour and I'm going to just do that with uh, three of the colours I'm going to use my uh, lemon or primary yellow I'm going to use my cyan and my magenta and the reason I'm using those is because they're very close to the, uh, the colours you get in, the, in a computer printer and they do mix very very nice colours so here's one that I did earlier, and what I'm now going to do is glaze over the top. So I've watered down the colour, and put it over the top, and hopefully what you'll see is that visual colour mixing where they cross. there. Now I don't know if you've noticed but with the um, the cyan and magenta uh, we've got a much better effect when we've put the magenta over the top of the cyan and uh, um, much much clearer purple and you might find that you might find that that the order that you apply things in can make a difference. So you can use it uh, with all of the watercolor techniques from session one and try it, try it out and, and see what happens. Um, but what I'm going to concentrate on is what if you use the paint um, in its much thicker form. So, just turn that over. And the first thing to have a look at is blending techniques. So, just cleaning my brush off. I'm going to take a color and I'm going to apply it on paper just using it neat so just a damp brush next to it some yellow nice can you see I'm putting that really quite neat and then to blend those together. So one way is to use a little bit of water to just sort of move across ways between them, mixing the magenta down, and the mix the yellow up to that, and to just sort of carefully using the water to blend those colours 
one into the other. Keep cleaning our brush and coming back. Second way of blending them together, I put a bit more on, is to blend them dry. So I think I'm going to come in this direction up to that yellow. And so my brush is just so slightly damp, that's all. Uh, take the neat colour. I'm just going to try to just sort of rub them into each other. Gentle little marks to try to blend those two colours together. So I started with the yellow. I'm trying to blend those into each other. I'm then going to take a bit of the magenta. Come in the other direction. Just trying to create that careful blend, keeping it, getting a bit more colour and just working them into each other. There. So that's blending one colour into another. It's another way you can blend colours though, and that's the stipple. So I'm going to start with a bit more of the red. Get a nice little patch on there. You can try different colours out. Why am I sticking to that colour? Let's use a bit of this. So I've got um, some of the cyan and what I'm going to do is stipple it onto the other one. Clean my brush. Get a bit more of the magenta. Stipple that back. So stippling the end of the brush. It doesn't matter what shape brush you've got, different shapes will create slightly different sort of textures as you do this. So stippling one colour into the other. If you want a very definite edge, you can always um, stipple along an edge. So, or paint. Start with that colour there. And which one shall I mix into it? Go for a bit of this. Yeah, so sort of let those mix in a little bit together and carefully lift that. Uh, so I've got a nice clean edge. You can obviously do a torn edge if you prefer, uh, if you want to. Another thing you can do is apply the paint with a cloth or a paper towel. So I'm going to take, um, let's see, I'm going to take some of this red and I'm just going to rub it on. And then I'm going to take another colour and rub that one over the top. A lovely sort of texture or sort of effect when you scumble. You can also spread with a palette knife or a piece of card. Um, so if I spread this on here, put it on really quite thickly. Again, clean my palette knife. In between, get another colour and so spread that in, that lovely. So applying it really quite thickly, you can use smaller marks if you prefer, but applying thickly. If you want it really thick, you can mix it up with um, special thickeners, or you could just use a bit of flour or corn flour which will create a lovely thickness, particularly if you've bought slightly cheaper acrylics and they are a little bit runny. You might want to try that. Instead of a, a palette knife, you can use a card and you can get some really quite special effects with this. So I'm going to just do a little bit 
with this. I'm going to apply the, the paint with either brush or, or palette knife to the edge of the card and then drag it. It's quite nice in itself. Let's clean that off. Like clean. But when I start to apply other colours, can't use my brush this time. So I'm just painting that on there and drag. Lovely sort of mixing of colours happening there. Done just a little bit more paint on there and I think I'm going to go for one more. Notice that I've not introduced any white at this stage, it's you know just playing around getting used to colour. So a bit of, let's try a bit of yellow in there too. Lovely effects. There's one last effect and I just need to see if I've got anything dry so that I can show you. Uh, that one's dry. So I'm going to apply another colour over the top. I'll paint that straight over the top. You see how well it covers. I paint it thickly. But then I'm going to scratch back into it whilst it's wet and the colour underneath will show through. That's a technique called Scrafito. So there are several techniques that you could try out um, with your acrylic paints. Um, there's one other thing that's just worth mentioning and that is that the acrylic paints work very well with other media. So, for example, and it does need to be dry to do this. Let's see that color we do. I can work pastel over the top. I, this is chalk pastel. Chalk pastel can just be blended in or it can be put across quite hard to create very definite marks. Coloured pencils are very good, as are oil pastels. In fact, you can try all kinds of media. So, and it is up to you, but I would say I could take a fine brush and very carefully um, paint on lines. But actually, if I can do the same thing with a um, another media why not nothing wrong with mixing your medias together a little bit okay so that is the basic techniques of applying acrylic paints um, next we're going to look at um, using some of these techniques in creating a painting it's a very good idea to look at um, how other people have used paint. Uh, and when you sort of look at something like this, uh, this lily pond painting by Monet, you can see paint dragged, you can see paint used thinner and thicker, um, swirled around, you can see a little bit of uh, scumbling perhaps in some areas. You can also uh, see it used quite thickly and possibly even scrofito back into. Um, now, I'm not saying that you need to to know or learn precisely how a particular artist has used paints, but you can sort of look and get ideas for how you can combine different paint techniques together by looking carefully at, um, at the particular artist. So you could pick anybody you like um, and do a study from their work. But what I would say is don't pick something that's very, very 
difficult in terms of uh, in terms of drawing techniques um, like a face and so on because really you're trying to learn about what we didn't use the paint for and I'd recommend spending a little bit of time do redoing um, different exercises trying out um, you know different techniques of using paint um, such as these to try to work out how you might create a similar sort of look before you do your painting these are called transcription studies uh, and they're about exploring an, an artist's work and once you've done a few studies then go ahead and launch yourself into painting however i'm only going to do a small section there's no need for me to do the whole composition i'm just going to do a small section because um, that will be enough for me to sort of study and explore their techniques so on here i'm just drawing out a sort of section i think i'm going to study this section here and then i'm going to translate that onto my page so i've got my little drawing there and now i'm going to start um, by putting on what's called underpainting i'm going to start with with some blocks of basic uh, color and i'm going to use the paint um, diluted to get this sort of background color i'm actually although i've drawn those on i'm going to ignore those and sort of wash in the background and what i can see is a curious combination here of uh, of blues going into purple and green so what i'm going to do is concentrate on um blue and green sort of washing those two into each other to get a general sort of background and also to get rid of the white of the paper so using a slightly bigger brush you can deliberately mix up a little bit of um if you're painting a little tub if that's easier so you've got a nice watery wash but i'm just going to add water to my paint here and start to wash it in So there is my underpainting, um, that wash. I clean forgot to take it, it down, so it was curling up and I've taped it down now. And next, I want to build up that background a bit more um, and get a little bit more excitement in the, the colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the card. As the colour um, is building up, I'm starting to get some quite uh, nice watery effects. So the, the feeling of one thing lying beneath another. And that dragging technique has really helped that. Um, notice the background is fairly dark. Um, and now I want to try and establish those water lilies. And that um, creates perhaps a little bit of a problem um, because the colours are very light. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to establish them with a block of colour. So a light, um, a light blue mainly. I'm going to put this on really quite thickly. Trying to get that sort of swirling sort of uh, look. 
But what I'm then going to do is just scruffito back in a little bit so that some of the colour from underneath comes back through. So I've got my uh, light blue bases and also where there are flowers I've put um, yellow mixed with white. Um, yellow is notoriously translucent um, so everything shows through it but by adding white which is much uh, more opaque uh, I can kind of get that lighter colour over the top. And now I'm going to start to look at um, more of these sort of details and work with a palette knife and a small brush to sort of begin to build in some of those details. So that's um, coming on and hopefully you can see how the, the colours are building up um, as they dry and then more colours applied over the top. And that's one of the great things about acrylic is the way you can keep building up colours. Now I'm just going to look again at the picture and notice that there's a lot of shadow underneath here. So what I'm now going to do is work back into it with a dark blue, but a dark blue wash. And what that will mean is that I can darken off these areas without losing too much of those sort of the marks that are underlying. And so just working that back here. There's my final painting. I've added a little bit of detail um, with coloured pencil as well. Um, it's not an exact replica. It's a, it's a loose interpretation. But I quite like the fact that I've managed to use quite a lot of different techniques um, within that piece of work. Uh, I'm now going to show you a slideshow of work by uh, past students. 
looking at artists that they've chosen. Um, and that's it for this week. Um, next session, we'll be looking at um, painting a still life. Bye-bye.